All right, I am around my other corner again and back to the side of kind of half stitches. And I'm just going to double crochet in them again until I get to that join. Then we are going to do the always fun weaving in. I used to loathe weaving in, but now I find it kind of relaxing. And it's one of those things that you can do without paying much attention. You gotta pay a little attention, but it's not like you have to count stitches, so I find it great to be able to do like when the kids are playing out front and I can watch them and do it at the same time. So I'm over here at my join and I'm going to go ahead and slip stitch in the top of that chain three. I'm gonna tighten that down and then I'm gonna go ahead and just do one chain and pull it long. That's how I like to fasten off. Pull it long enough that I can weave it in easy and I pull that chain down. Grab my scissors and cut that. I already cut my cream join that I did earlier. So all of my um, ends are now ready to be weaved in. Quite a lot for one little triangle, but we'll start with one of them. And then I'll show you how you can join these up. So let me grab my yarn needle real quick and we'll start weaving in an end. Okay, I got my yarn needle. I always like the ones with the big eyes that are easy to thread. But to make it even easier, I just lay over my yarn and I pinch it really tight and slide it off the needle. And then I just push it right through the eye of the hole. So it's a lot easier than trying to stick a frayed yarn edge through the center of that needle. Now because I have two different colors, I have to be, um, I have to pay attention to how I'm sewing this in because I only want the green in the green. Even though I'm going to try to keep most of the sewing on the back side of my project or the wrong side, I still don't want to go into the white because whether, especially if this is a blanket, you're going to see both sides. So you want to make it nice no matter where you're, where you're weaving it in. So what I usually do is I'll start right next to the stitch that I just fastened off to kind of help pull it down and get it more in there. Then I'm going to start weaving through each of these stitches. Now these stitches are spread apart a little bit so I have to be kind of careful because I don't want to just start going straight across because I'll have a funny looking line of yarn through the center. So I don't want to do that. I need to actually go down each stitch and kind of hide the yarn as best I can. So what I do a lot of times is I'll kind of run through the previous row. I'll use that to hide my um, sideways stitches. And they're not as visible. And I try to zigzag as much as I can. So I'll go up one stitch and then go backwards um, down a different way. And the zigzagging helps to secure it. It's not going to pull out as easily when I tug on my project. Plus you also want to tug on it as you're sewing so that you have all of the slack or you want it to make it kind of slack so that it's not pulled really tight. So when you cut it, it's going to shoot back and then shoot out of your project and you'll have a funny little end sticking out. So pull on your project in a couple different ways as you're sewing and right before you cut it so that you don't have that problem. So I'm just going to go in and out of all of these stitches. You can also, if you don't want to go across, you can just go back up the stitch in a different area so that it's going to hold it and just work across. And then once you have it weaved in enough to where you're happy, you can go ahead and cut that end. So I'll just cut the end on this one so I can show you how you can join up these motifs. Okay, I still haven't weaved those in yet. I just wanted to show you a couple different ways that you can use these motifs to make certain projects. So if you wanted to, you could just make one row each and then join them up on the diagonal and you can make a scarf. So you can make just a triangular you know, make a whole row of all these triangles into a scarf. That could be quite cute. Or you can just start making rows of these and then join them all together to make an actual blanket. So you can do a few different things with these motifs. You can make purses. You can um, 
join them up to how you can um, fold them to actually make a three-dimensional shape. Sometimes they make slippers out of granny squares, so you can do a lot of different things. Um, if you're making a purse, you might want to put a lining because you can see you're probably going to lose a lot of stuff out of these kind of motifs because they're quite holy. But you can do quite a few different things with triangles. And you can use them with other shapes. You can join them up to squares and, or hexagons and make some pretty interesting um, blankets or whatever it is you may want to make. So that's how you make the um, triangular granny square. If you have any questions, leave them below. And thank you for watching.